Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Movies We Can Learn From. And today we're going to review Cinema Paradiso, which is an Italian film. Um, and it's about a boy's relationship with, with film, with a projectionist in a small town uh, in, in Sicily uh, in the 30s, I guess it was, maybe the 40s. And late for this 40s. discussion, late 40s. And we have Shackley Ruffetto, a former chief judge of the Second Circuit and a former military man, um, actually still a military man in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> and he is interested in movies. Um, and we're going to talk about that with him. So this is an award-winning 1988 Italian film uh, about film. And it won all kinds of awards. And it, it's in Italian, so you have to look at the... Uh, you know the subscript, um, but it's um, it's it's a great movie. That's my opinion. I'm kind of I'm tipping you off, Shackley, how I feel about it. Why don't you tell us where the movie goes? Okay, uh, just to give you some a basic introduction. It was as you say, it's a 1988 movie, Italian made. It apparently was responsible for a kind of a renaissance or a revitalization of the Italian film industry industry at the time. Uh, the, it was directed and written by a man named Giuseppe Tonatori, if I pronounce that correctly. And it's all Italian cast. Uh, if I named him off, you wouldn't recognize him unless you live in Italy. Um, and, and as you say, it won the 1989 Academy Award for the Best Foreign Film. It won the Grand Prize at the Cannes Film Festival and a whole bunch of other prizes from different film organizations. And at least is considered by some as one of the best 100 films ever made, which is pretty high praise. But interestingly, when it was first, it was it's it's been put out in several uh, lengths, uh, including a director's cut, which seems to be popular these days. But when it was originally shown in Italy, it was not popular. Uh, and then it was, I guess, rejiggered a little bit and then shown to an international audience and immediately captured everybody's imagination and became very, very popular. Uh, and just as an example, it cost about five or six million dollars to make, but it earned 36 million. So it was a pretty darn uh, successful film. And uh, as you say, it's a, it's a film about coming of age of a young, very young boy in, in a small town and the district of Palermo in, in Sicily. Palermo, interestingly, is, is uh, the, the, one of the big main areas of contention during World War II. General Patton uh, rushed there to beat, beat, uh, beat um, um, Field Marshal Montgomery uh, in World War II. But uh, Sicily also is a very interesting uh, place. I haven't been there. I've read about it. But together with uh, uh, other islands of the Mediterranean, like Cyprus and Malta, Sicily, uh, they are these places are the crossroads of the Mediterranean. So many different civilizations and cultures uh, and kingdoms and you know empires have have uh, uh, owned them and and affected them and and. Um, so it's a, it's a very interesting place. It's interesting watching the movie because it was mostly fo filmed in the Palermo area. The background scenery looks like California, <laughs> which is just <laughs> like the, Medi the quote, Mediterranean uh, uh, ambiance of uh, uh, California. Anyway, it's uh, the small town that it's, uh, that it's uh, uh, filmed in um, it, it doesn't exist. It's a, it's a, it's a, I guess a composite small town of a, on a hillside in in uh, in Sicily, but it's super quaint. Uh, and one of the one of the uh, things pointed out about the film is that it it the the cinematography is is startling. Uh, the 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 way they designed and and did the photography of the film. Um, is not really notable for all the different angles and uh, ways that they portray things just using the camera and the way that they photograph people. And I'll give you one quick example. At the very end of the film, when Toto, 
the, which is the nickname for the little boy, return. He he becomes a famous film director in Rome, and he returns to his hometown to honor uh, his old friend Alfredo, who is the man who operated the, pro the film projector in the in the little town. Uh, after he, he passes away, and they they they're walking behind the hearse, and the one of the screenshot film shots is from inside the hearse looking over the top of the of the coffin out the back window at these people walking down the street. I've never seen anything like that. It was very striking. And the yeah, film it was. Is I remember that very exact camera angle. It was <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, well, the film is full of camera angles like that. And uh, it, it just shows that this, this gentleman... Tonatori was an incredibly uh, create had an incredibly creative mind, and then the other thing that strikes you is um, aside from the story, is the are the characters that are uh, that are, populate this film. They are extraordinary. Um, now I mentioned earlier that that the film wasn't popular in Italy when it first came out, and I I, I remember thinking as I was watching it, maybe that's because. Uh, the people in Italy said, well, they're just a bunch of, you know, local yokels, <laughs> backcountry, backcountry Italians, you know, what's so interesting about them? But for us, it was, it's like a, a view into another world. And, and the people that he selected to, to serve as actors, I'm sure they weren't all actors. They, some of them must have been just townspeople. They're extraordinary. You know, the, you have this priest, uh, well, just to get into a little bit, this little town uh, is right after World War II, and uh, as anybody who knows the history of the war, uh, Italy and Sicily were just were devastated during World War II, and and there was starvation. And many of the Italian soldiers had been sent to the Eastern Front to fight with the Germans and died there and were in prison camps, and uh, so things were pretty grim. And people didn't have enough to eat, and so so it was very 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 basic there. And uh, uh, so, uh, but so the church and this uh, 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 cinema house were the two entertainments for the village, and the and the the cinema house was owned by the local priest, and and uh, for some reason, and he would he would review all the films that were shown before the before the public could see them. And he was he was he was very prudish about what what could be seen, and felt that he had to censor anything that uh, involved kissing or anything of a, of a sexual uh, nature. So so he would have Alfredo, who was the projectionist, show the film, and he would sit there with this with this little bell from the mass that was used in the mass, and, and he would ring the bell whenever he saw something that he thought should be censored, and. And Alfredo would have to stop the film, cut it out, cut the portion out, and he would save those. And then he would have to re-splice them back into the film before the film would be circulated to the next town that had rented, you know, the right to to view it. He couldn't. He couldn't, however, uh, splice all of them, or he didn't splice all of them. It was never quite clear whether it was intentional or not. And he put he put a lot of those aside, which he put into a, a special reel. Uh, which he preserved, and which is which is uh, comes up at the end of the film, which we can we can get to. It's kind of an interesting way. They they the critics also um, uh, as have said that they thought that the ending of the film was the very best ending of any film, or or right up there amongst the best. And we can we can talk about that separately. But it involved those those film outtakes. Uh, so anyway. The, the story is basically uh, the the famous director starts out as a little boy whose nickname is Toto, and he he's befriended by the man who runs the projector in the in the Cinema Paradiso, the the theater in the in the in the town, and uh, he's kind of a scamp, and he's he's pretty talks back a lot. He's quite a character, and he there's the whole development of their relationship is very very uh, well done and interesting. But eventually, they become friends, and uh, and the, and Alfredo, the projectionist, he teaches 
taught her how to run the the uh, the the, the, mach the projection machine, and and it, it, it's shown in the film, and it's this huge, big, huge machine <laughs> that was looked pretty complicated. It was it's not a simple machine to to operate. And uh, anyway, he one night um, the uh, there's a group of people who want a late night viewing of a film uh, after the theater is closed. So Alfreda figures out a way to to project the image from the film across the street onto a building, uh, which is a very, uh, that, that's another one of those interesting cinematic views that, that uh, is so striking in this film. The movie itself is, um, is framed in the form of a flashback. That is uh, uh, Salvatore, who's, who's uh, Toto when he's a young child, uh, He's he, the movie starts uh, in his apartment in Rome, and then his uh, he gets a message through his lady friend that his mother has called and said that Alfredo has passed away and that the um, funeral is the next day. And then he flashes back to his childhood, and uh, but most of the movie is is about his childhood in the village in Palermo. In any case, uh, uh, one night. Uh, when uh, a, a late night group wanted to see the film and the, the theater had to close, uh, Alfredo arranges to cause the projector to project the image of the movie across the street onto a building. And while he's in a pretty spectacular uh, cin cin cinematographic uh, 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 view to see on the film, it's very, it's another one of those interesting ways that the director is. Uh, come up with to uh, to to create the movie. In any case, during that time, the projector overheats and it catches on fire. And is, and and uh, Alfredo tries to put it out, and uh, he's not able to. And he's badly burned. And Toto comes to uh, to try to save him and drags him uh, down uh, the metal stairway. Uh, and saves his life basically gets him uh, pretty much out of the out of the building and uh, later on uh sometime later uh because of the uh, loss uh socially for this village of the cinema um uh one of the village uh members uh, uh strikes it big on the football pool makes a lot of money and decides to invest that money in a new uh, theater, which they call the Nuevo Cinema Paradiso. And unfortunately, uh, Alfredo was blinded in the fire permanently. And so he's unable to continue his work as the projectionist. And, and uh, the only other person in the town who knows how to run a film projector apparently is Toto. And so even though he's a, just a young fellow, he's uh, hired by the new uh, uh, film, uh, uh, theater owner to operate the uh, the project projectionist or operate as a projectionist, and he does that for about the next ten years. And so, so the film goes through his young adulthood, and during that period of time, he meets uh, Elena, uh, a young woman, and falls in love. And there's th that story is portrayed very nicely, but eventually. Uh, uh, Alfredo uh, tells uh, Toto that he needs to leave the village and to pursue his life uh, away from the village and to move on and uh, to have more opportunities, basically, than he would have ha would have if he just stayed in the village. Uh, and as pointed out in the film, many of the people in the village are illiterate; they didn't have the benefit of any education, so it's it's a back it's a backwater. And uh, Alfredo realizes this, and he um, convinces Toto that he needs to leave and go off to Rome to seek his fortune, which he does. And of course, that's why the, uh, the movie is a flashback. Um, Jay, you want to? Uh, maybe I should take a pause there and let you jump in and and uh, add your two cents. Okay, <laughs> I, I saw the movie back in the uh, '80s or maybe the '90s. Um... And, uh, and then here it was again, and and the the rendition of I saw of the movie I saw both times was the shortened version. But you mentioned before the show began that there was a, an additional part of the movie before the director's cut, 
which included uh, Toto's efforts to find Elena, um, <clears throat> uh, who he spotted at some point. Uh, I, I guess it was in the village uh, when he went back um, and uh, tries to you know, recapture that because he's never found another woman he cared about. And a lot of his um, you know, retrospective is he's in his bed at home with a woman you never actually see her face. And it was a woman he didn't care about. So he'd been living with her and maybe many others, but Elena was the one for him. Unfortunately, he could not connect with her later. She decided, to, as you told me, decided to stay with her then husband. Um, so, I mean, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an unrequited love story in that sense. It's also an unrequited love story with Alfredo because Alfredo was blinded. And Alfredo, as you said, uh, realized that there was nothing, nothing for Toto in the village, and Toto had to go. And part of the part of the fact uh, that he had to go, part of it was that at some point he had to go into the Italian army. Remember, he had some sort of obligated period of service, and he took mm -hmm. off. And the um, the theater manager said, "No problem. Whenever you come back, you'll have a job." Well, that wasn't true. He came back, and they had replaced him with someone else which is to say that um, there was actually no future in being the projectionist again. But let me go back to my, my early thoughts about this. This is a beautiful movie. It's also a movie that, that, that flows with you. I mean, you, you are emotionally caught up in this movie. And there are little things that happen, little sort of tags that happen. And, and, and you realize that they are taking, the director is taking you through a whole process. I mean, for example, the fire is with film that burns. And they teach you that in those days, film burned. And they teach you that later, when Toto was a, an adult, film didn't burn. They found a way to make film that didn't burn. So you, you, you taught all these things. And, and the, the romance with Elena was also, you know, Alfredo told him a story about a guy who loved this woman and stood outside her, is that out of Shakespeare, you know? He stood outside her house for a hundred, he said, he said, will you love me back if I stand outside your house for a hundred days? <clears throat> and there's such meaning in this. <clears throat> so when Alfredo wanted to express, I'm sorry, when, when Toto wanted to express his love for Elena, he did that. He stood outside the house for, I guess it was a hundred days, and uh, she never responded to him, and he walked off, and that broke up the relationship. Um, I'm not sure what happened. I don't remember what happened after that, but it was it was the, the tip off by Alfredo about what you got to do is stand outside the house for a hundred days. <laughs> Show shows just how dedicated you are. Um, there were all kinds of little things in there. And if you watch the movie carefully, you, you, you kind of get enough of these tips so that it all falls into place. One thing leads to another. So it, it's very well organized. The script, even though it's in Italian, it's very well organized and you can, you can move with it. Um, it can feel the, you know, the, the best sign of literature in general is, is when the characters are dynamic, they change. And they all changed. Every one of them changed. Um, his, his mother, you know, kind of broke down because she lost her husband in the war, right? He went off to fight at the Russian front, never came back. And uh, Alfredo was really became his father. And the relationship between Alfredo and Toto was so intense. Um, so, that, you know, the whole thing was like the family of this village. They all knew each other. They all participated. They all went to the movies together. They all went to church together. It was a together thing. And, and the, the nature of this group, I think it's very Italian, actually, in a small town, um, was um, just like a big family. Everybody, everybody knew the characteristics and the successes and failures of the personalities around them. And so you began to know all the people. And you admired Toto because he was smart. And what did you call him? He was really a wise guy. Even mm -hmm. as a small child, what a good-looking child he was, and what a good-looking man in his in his twenties, and also when he w was the film producer in uh, 
in um, in, in Rome. But to, to go to your uh, your uh, reference to the ultimate ending, the ultimate ending tore me up the first time, and it tore me up the second time. <laughs> um, the, the uh, when Alfredo died, he left one thing uh, for Toto, and it was a canister of film. And uh, Toto took it back, didn't think much of it. But then when he got back to Rome, uh, he played it. And it is the most remarkable thing. It's one, of, it's one of those things that makes you remember the film forever. He opens the canister, and he plays the film. And it's all the kisses, one kiss after another. And you say to yourself, this is more than just a roll of kisses. Imagine watching a roll of kisses that go on and on. Um, a lot of American films, but also European films, where they were kissing each other. And some, what do you want to call it, compromising positions, too, if you watched, if you noticed. Um, there, there were some nude shots in that, in that canister. But the point is that when you, as an observer of the film, um, see these kisses, you say, my God, this is so beautiful to see people kissing. It is so beautiful to see love so intense like that, so connected like that. And I think that's why, well, they said it's the best ending they ever saw, but maybe the best film they ever saw. But one of the essential elements of that film was the ending. Uh, that's before the director's cut. <laughs> you know, the, the other thing that uh, that struck me was is, as, they, as they go through the movie, they actually show part, uh, little snippets of, of the films that are being shown in the in the the Cinema Paradiso and then the Nuevo Cinema Paradiso. And you can see you can see that as time marches on, the films change. The films reflect what was going on at the time that's set in the movie, and so they become more modern, so to speak. And you can see you can see that the actors, the Hollywood actors, and the and the movie actors who are portrayed in the films, they change over time. And and when he views the final. A uh, canister of films of the of the r romantic entanglements and kissing that you mentioned. This it's the same thing. It's that progression that goes through, and I and I, and that was obviously intentional, and it was very clever and subtle. And at the end of the canister uh, uh, is the end of the it's the end of the movie. The the fini that comes up at the end of the movie is 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 i guess from the canister that's what i thought and it was also the end of the of the movie in chief uh those are very uh subtle and clever artistic touches i think that this movie and that's just an example and it's it's full of touches like that yeah and the characters weave among each other the events the little lessons uh the relationships they weave and bob and and you follow them through the movie, and it's almost like you're there. You're a member of the family in this small town. Um, I was so touched by it. It was an emotional experience to watch it, even the second time. I don't remember that much from the first time, but the second time was really, really powerful. So here's, here's an Italian movie in Italian, which actually reaches you more than so many movies we see now, American movies. Yes. Uh, there was no violence, and not even... Well, there was there was a some challenge, but it wasn't really violence, um, and there was um, this epical quality, and this study of a society of a civil society uh, in this little town, and it's you know you could the whole movie was like a hundred feet wide, you know, <laughs> plus mm -hmm. plus his time in Rome, mm -hmm. it, it didn't have to go very far, um, and and I thought. Um, as I said before, uh, we were all living in that little box, in that little theater. One of the sad things about the movie is when he went back, he went he went to the theater, and the owner of the theater told him that he weren't making any money anymore. Uh, mm. People found other ways to entertain themselves, and so he, he closed the theater. So the theater had been the center of the life in the town. Mm. And to close the theater, you're closing down hmm, the center of the life in the town. And he walked through this abandoned theater with all these um, symbols of life gone by, and that was very touching. The mm. whole thing was a, it was a, 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 it was his life as it had, as it had evolved. It was his life looking back 
and appreciating such great lessons um, that the town and Alfredo and all the funny people in the town had taught him. Uh, it was so rich in that way to appreciate all the things in his life. He, he, was, he, was, he was enriched by going back. He was enriched by the film canister. He was enriched by the people. And so, so we were enriched also to see him do that. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the, the extended portion that we didn't get to see with the uh, uh, Amazon Prime uh, version. I, I, in fact, if you, if, if you could find that, if somebody wants to watch the movie, I would recommend that you find the extended version of it. I'm sure it's available someplace. Uh, and that's the portion where, uh, upon his return to the village for Alfredo's uh, funeral, he sees a little girl that looks like Elena, and then he finally finds Elena. And she, one of the things she tells him, this is tying those things together, which you, you're, you're talking about, is she says, well, Alfredo told me not to contact you and return uh, or respond to your letters that you wrote to me while you were in the army because it was better for me. And that if I really loved you, I would do that uh, so that you would be able to move on and to uh, create a life away from the village. And she did that. But then she said, but I, I wrote you a secret note and I posted it in the, uh, in the cinema. And you, if you flash back and you remember, there was a, there was a, a couple of scenes where Alfredo was posting these uh, uh, invoices uh, on these, uh, I guess, nails in the, in the cinema room. And there's, there's hundreds of them. And uh, and and she says, I I put the secret note to you, telling you that I loved you, in there. And so one of the things he does is he he runs back to the old uh, theater, which is as you say is is in disrepair and about to be destroyed. And he frantically goes through all of those notes that are still hanging on the wall, tattered and dust covered, and so on. And he finds the note. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> symbolic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and then and then the, and then all the villagers line up outside in the in the square. Well, when they detonate the uh, the cinema because they're going to replace it with a parking structure. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and and the 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 owner of the of the cinema, who uh, indicated that uh, th there was not so much interest in in going to the theater now because of TVs and. Cassetta, he calls them. Um, and then there's a scene where he's at his mother's house and, and there's the television. <laughs> right. And that's why they had a, that's right. why they lost the theater. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I just remembered, by the way, what happened after his hundred days where he was showing his uh, affection for her, for Elena. Mm -hmm. He walked away. Um, actually, he looked away at the instant moment that she was opening the, the window shade um, mm -hmm. and didn't see that he was, that she was looking for him. Uh, and he wrote her off and walked away. And a few minutes later, this is the part I had forgotten. She comes after him and she finds him. And they, you know, they swear their love. And uh, mm -hmm. what was regrettable is that, that they were uh, driving, remember? Driving in a car and, um, and they ran into her father. And her father put his hands on his hips and said, you're not the one for my beautiful daughter. We're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then they took Elena away, remember? And they didn't say where Elena mm -hmm. was going. And he could never find her. He tried to find her. He could never find her. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was a great tragedy of his life. So the town gave him so much to carry away, as I say, to enrich him. I don't know what it is. You know, we could we could examine it frame by frame, Shackley, but I have to say, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, mm -hmm. This is one of the richest, most touching, most emotionally engaging movies I've ever seen. And and it was, um, it was all pure art, pure humanity. Um, so remote in terms of culture and yet so close. Mm -hmm. I, the one so, scene I, 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 I thought was interesting, I didn't quite understand it, is, is when he was uh, standing at the window and didn't see her come to the window, it was New Year's Eve. And, right. And, remember? 
and 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 he walks away dejectedly down the street and people are throwing bottles out of the windows crashing into the streets and i, I don't I, I i i guess that was the custom at the time you drink your champagne to the new year and throw the glass out the window <laughs> So many, so many things that you could only find in a small town like that, which had a, a history of hundreds or thousands of years together. Well, I, I must say that uh, you, if you try to connect this to the war, it's hard to do it because, you know, it's only a period of time. Um, and, you know, and, and his father was lost in the war. That's about it. Um, but when, when you try to connect it epically over decades and decades, the director shows you, as you said, Shackley, the evolution of the town. For example, in the early scenes, um, when he was a child, there's no cars in the town, like zero cars. But later, the place is filled with cars, and you realize that the, the demolition of the theater in order to make it for a parking lot, that was because there were so many cars there. <laughs> Everything had changed. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't obvious. There were a lot of things in this movie that you really have to look for. You have to watch. You have to immerse yourself uh, in the boy, in Alfredo, in, in the people in the crowd. I yeah, loved the... Alfredo. I loved Alfredo. He was such a loving guy, even to the point of telling Toto he had to go. What a loving statement that is. I can't think in literature where you have the same kind of setup. You have to go. And that you can never talk to me again. You can never come back here again. And it was all about how much he loved the boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing that's interesting is they show the progression of the audience over the years and how the audiences change and how they uh, react to the movies that they're seeing. And and there are so many extraordinary characters in, in, in the audiences. Young, young people, old people, people sleeping, people. People doing crazy things. Uh, that that was one of the really interesting parts of the movie. I thought was just all these extraordinary people. I can't believe they're all actors, but maybe they are. <laughs> You're right. I mean, each one of them had a personality. It's like the director yeah. was going seat to seat um, and examining the individuals. He was giving you a little portrait, and <laughs> lots of different portraits of the people in the theater. The yeah. theater was the theater was a living, breathing organism. <laughs> That's well said. That's a great way to say it. Yeah, and as and as they progressed, they wore different clothes. They acted differently. It was it was extraordinary. Yeah, well, I I, well, I I recommend people see it. It's an outstanding movie. Yeah. What what rating do you give it? Um, yeah. Think well, of any rating you like. Oh, I think it's, a, I would put it up right up there at a 15 on a scale of 1 to 10. It, is, it has so many <laughs> interesting subtleties to it. And the photography is extraordinary. It really is. It, there's, it's worth seeing it on a number of different levels. Uh, and um, there are, as you say, there are very few movies these days that are come even close. Yeah, I agree. And... and uh... I wanted to watch it because I, I needed it. I remembered how warm and, and fuzzy it was the first time. But, uh, with you know, you, you go on um, these cable channels and you watch movies now and it's all so dark, so violent, if not depressing. And that so many of these movies are about crime and corruption and the worst side of our society, the worst side. Um, they're about, you know, kidnapping and murder, and uh, ah, gee, I mean, it could go on. There's, there's only like ten plots, and they repurpose the plots for all these dark movies. And I said to myself, "Gee, I could really use a movie about love, <laughs> about real the examination, the careful uh, introspective examination of love." And this is the movie for that. I wish there were more movies like this. And I also give it a 15 um, or more. Well, thank you, Shackley. Thank you for joining me on this.
Thank, Thank you. you for joining me on all the other movies we've reviewed. I hope we can do some more going forward. All kinds of genres. Each one has its own has its own benefits. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.